My name is Andy Andrews, and I am one of the... Thank you. Thank you. I am just one of the founding members of Team in Focus. And did you say you can't hear? <laughs> Move up. <laughs> I don't know. We are very excited about this weekend. We're very excited for you. We're very excited about what's going on. And I know that you are excited about the growth you've experienced over the last 60 days. We're going to stop here just for a moment because this is not a planned part of the convention. This is not something that's even on the, the schedule or on the syntax backstage. But we're going to fin spend a few moments here and talk about the beginnings of what we determined Team in Focus should be. Eighteen months ago, there were a few people who met in a hotel room in Chicago who met to determine what was wrong with our business model at the time. We sat down, we looked at each other as friends, and as, as business owners who had worked side by side, but maybe across a gap for a while. And as we looked at each other and asked questions of each other, a few things became abundantly clear about what we had been a part of for a number of years. Now, I remember the very first time I ever knew that there was an inequity in the payment of funds to the new guy. I remember the first time I became aware of the inequity of the payment of the funds to everybody. That there was nothing actually written down. It was backdoor deals. It was a good old boy network where people patted each other on the back and winked. And some people got paid and some people didn't get paid. And some people didn't get paid as much, and some people didn't even know anybody was getting paid. And one of the things that we determined that day is that no matter what happened to us, we were either going to institute a system that was fair, that was transparent, where everything that was on the table, we were either going to do that or we were not going to do this at all. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Now, when we stated our intentions, Almost immediately, people became nervous. The corporation, however, came and literally flew to where we were, the highest levels of the corporation. And we were told, not only thank you, thank you, my God, thank you, for 35 years we've been dealing with this problem, this is the problem that is killing our industry. This is the problem that's on the Internet. This is the problem that if we can get solved, everything will be better. We were literally applauded and told that we were backed from the highest levels of the corporation, backed literally from the families, the founding members of the corporation. Well, obviously, wait a minute, wait, 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 don't clap yet. We were obviously very excited and very encouraged about this process. But any time someone deals with the status quo, there are people who are nervous. However, we know that failure is the only option 
of someone who remains consistent with the status quo. If you can't move forward and you can't move back and you must remain with the status quo, there is a degenerative effect that will move in upon your life and your business and failure is the only option of someone or a business that accepts the status quo. Now, as we began to implement what we were doing, there was a lot of pressure from all parts of this industry because there were people who felt very threatened by an open and transparent compensation plan. As pressure came to bear, on people who applauded our efforts, the applause got noticeably quieter. In January, we stood in front of you in BBSs all over the nation, all over North America, and we read a State of the Union address to Team in Focus where we determined that what we were about to do was to move the status quo forward once again. We were about to embark upon something that we had looked at months and months earlier, and that was a way to get more money to the new person fast. Now, a lot of people have been, a lot of your leaders have been in meetings with other leaders where the issues at hand when they're talking about compensation, the issues are consistently about bonuses for large pins and more money upline and more money to show you dream. More money to buy cars so that you will want to have these cars. These are what the conversations are about. The conversations with your leaders we're almost exactly the opposite because, and this is unbelievable to me that anybody could not just see this, to me, the most important part of any piece of compensation, the most important part of any business plan has got to be the newest person. Because believe me, if the newest person is not happy, there ain't no cars for nobody. Right? We went to great expense with many, many, many different consultants, three different uh, legal offices in three different states to make sure that everything we were rolling out is absolutely appropriate, absolutely above board, transparent, fair to everybody, especially the new guy, and absolutely in accordance with all laws and ethics that we hold dear in this country. But as pressure came to bear, the applause that had grown quieter ceased altogether. And I wanted to stop this morning to let you know that we have been dealing with a situation for the past couple of months, and we will continue to deal with it, and believe me, everything will be fine, but we're a team, all right? We're a team, and we do not hide things and because we're a part of team, you remember the first video that rolled? That when King Arthur sat at the round table, he was not a king, he was a servant. He was a servant to the land of Camelot. Believe me, there is not a leader in team in focus who wants to be king. We know what happens to kings. <laughs> 
We want to be one of you. We want to share not only the income that we produce as a team, because we are such a powerful force, we want to share with you the struggles. We want to share with you the information about the struggles. And so just for a moment, I'm just taking a moment here before we bring on our next guest that's very important to this struggle. I want to take a moment to tell you just a little bit about the struggle. You remember the applause that began and got quieter and has now ceased? Well, as we rolled out your entry-level compensation plan, the pressure that came to bear was frankly astounding. The pressure not to do it at all. And things were said to us about uh, possible violation of laws and maybe above the level of risk. Now, the demands not to do it were consistent, but we could never get a clear picture of why somebody would say that this was a possible violation. Well, after all, there are companies on the New York Stock Exchange being publicly traded in the United States of America using the exact same compensation plan. It's hard for us to determine with all the legal minds we had working on this why Everybody we consulted said, yeah, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. And yet we were getting so much pressure from the outside until finally one day it occurred to us that, frankly, there are people who are absolutely fine with the diamonds making an excess amount of money out here. In fact, many times more than they make within the business that they talk about, absolutely fine with those people making more money because if they make more money, to make more money, they have to have all the little guys in line buying expensive products. And without those people in line buying those products, the big guys can't make the money. And so this occurred to us that maybe this was a reason, but surely not. Until about a month ago, when the demands became very strong, and I was actually on a, a conference call. I Get this. I was the only person on the conference call that was not an attorney. We had um, a, a, an attorney. We had two of their attorneys, two of our attorneys, and me. Can you imagine that? Four attorneys and a comedian. What a conference call. This is great, isn't it? All right. And out of the mouths of one of their attorneys came the edict that 98% of the IBOs were not to participate in income, nor were they to know there was even an opportunity. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me say this again, because that's what I did. I went, wait, wait a minute. The phone must be something's wrong here. What was that? 98, I'm trying to reconstruct it in my mind. 98% of the people in our organization, 98%, these are the people we've sworn to protect. These are the people we went out for. 98 percent, wait a minute, 98 percent of the people in our organization cannot participate in the income, nor can they even know there's an opportunity. I listened to that and I thought, oh, oh, oh my gosh, and I ran into the kitchen and I grabbed a pen and a piece of paper and I wrote it down because I said, nobody will ever believe this. Nobody will ever believe they said that. I can't believe they said that. Nobody will believe it. Holy cow, I wish they'd put it on paper. So they did. A letter from the corporation dated March 25th, 2002. 
carbon copying everybody in the corporation, evidently. And a line here that says, your plan presents challenges under our rules unless its income opportunity is limited to a small percentage of high pin level IBOs. Let me just make sure you get this. Um, your plan presents challenges under our rules unless its income opportunity is limited to a small percentage of high pin level IBOs. Now, let me just tell you this, all right? Just stop for a second. I'm not on stage here to make you mad because, let me just tell you this, because we're not mad. We're fine. I just want you to know we're fine. We're not mad. We're not scared, all right? Right? We will continue, we will continue our dialogue with them, and I expect everything will be fine. But I, I'll just tell you this, I mean, we, we are going to continue our dialogue with them. We expect everything will be absolutely fine. We're going to get our attorneys together with their attorneys again. Er everything will be fine. But you have to know, we will not lose this for you. All right. Now, we're about to go out of here on Sunday afternoon, and we're going to be putting people in like the world has never seen. Now, you understand that this is the fear, because the pressure that came to bear on everybody, the pressure that came to bear on the corporation was simply because in, in a, a time of corporate recession, one place in this entire business doubled in 60 days. 